today I'm going to go over various ways to create shapes in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, first thing you want to do, you can open an image or just create a new blank file. Um, but there's a couple things to consider, different ways of making shapes, whether it's a shape, vector shape, or rasterized pixels. Um, so I'm just going to go over that really quickly. If you open the Tools palette, make sure it's open, go to Window, then Tools. If it's not, and over here I'm using CS5, but it'll look similar on some of the other versions, but um, click and hold onto the rectangle tool and we have rectangle, rounded rectangle, custom shape. I could use you know, any of these. I could use rectangle, uh, ellipse. I'm just going to do custom shape. And if you go up to the top here on the uh, very top options, if you go to window options, make sure that's selected as well. Um, you can click there and choose one of the custom shapes. If you don't have all these, just click the side arrow here and go to all and that will load them all up. So, I will just choose this tree right here. And if I go ahead and click and drag out, and I'm going to hold shift to maintain the right proportion, you'll see I make a shape right here. Now, if you notice up here on the top on the options palette, you have uh, this three right here. If you notice, you hover the mouse over it, it says shape layers. The second one says paths third one says fill pixels. That's because when you create this with this selected, when you create a shape with uh, this first one, okay, it creates its own shape layer. And if you look over here, you notice it has its own layer automatically. Now this is a vector shape, almost like you're an illustrator. If you make it larger, it will not lose the resolution. It won't start to pixelate because there's just paths and points on the path and anchor points. Now you can double click on right here on the layers palette that color and change the color, okay? And you can also see what shape it is there. And um, also if you click the path selection tool um, over here on the toolbar, if you have it selected, then you can move things around or click and hold and go into the direct selection tool. And you can actually um, click right on the edge there and move you know, specific anchor points, almost like we're an illustrator, okay, because this is vector art. So those anchor points and the paths in between, you can edit, maybe not as customizable as an illustrator, but you can definitely move the paths and the anchor points around, okay. And the positive of that is it's a vector art, so it's not going to lose resolution if you make it larger once you draw it out. Um, and make sure show transform controls is up there. If you don't have it, you won't see the edges of the entire shape to click and drag on that corner. And I hold shift again to maintain the right proportion. Um, the negative is it doesn't really work like a lot of other, uh, you know, layers, okay, like uh, pixel layers. So if you wanted to add some kind of filter, let's say um, I'll just go to artistic, colored pencil. It says it has to rasterize it first. So you can't add any of the, a lot of those filters because it needs to rasterize it, meaning turn it into pixels instead of it being points on a path and it being uh, vector art, okay? So I'm just gonna get rid of that one. I'll go back to my background layer. Actually, I'm gonna double click that and make it a normal layer. Um, let you do that. Now this custom shape tool again, if you click on the second one, all you are creating, let me draw this out again, is just a path. So it doesn't, if you printed this out, it wouldn't even show that because that's just a path, okay? Why would you want to use this? Well, if you go to the paths palette right here, it should be on the side, or if not, just go to window and then paths. And you can do special effects to it. And I mean, you can choose the brush tool and let's make a smaller brush. And let's make some kind of special effect brush. And if you choose chose one of these, um, you know, then it kind of goes along that edge there. And that's kind of a special effect brush, but you could use any of the brushes and it goes along that path, okay? But it is still separate though, because if you got rid of the path, you'd still have those pixels. Um, that one's not as popular, I don't think, as just doing a shape or doing, say, a, uh, you know, regular pixel 
based uh, shape, which I'll show you. Let me just make this one. So you click the custom shape tool again, and now let's try the third one. Now this one's pretty simple. All it is is pixels, okay? Now if I click and drag and hold shift, that's actually going to be on my background layer. If you don't want it, if you want it on its own layer, go ahead and just press create new layer first on the bottom of the layers palette, and then draw it out on an empty layer. Then you can actually move it around on its own layer with the move tool. The problem with this though is once you create it, you try to drag it out, and you can already see the pixelation. So you can kind of see it there along the edge because it's rasterized. It's uh, pixel based just like a photo in Illustrator would be. Okay. And you also can't, there's no path to select with the selection tool to adjust the uh, you know, anchor points and paths and all that. It's just pixels. Okay. That's useful for if you're making a small button or um, if you're creating something you know you're not going to make it larger, like uh, navigation buttons on a website, then you could go ahead and just create pixels. But if you're creating something that you think you might um, you know, make larger later, I would say definitely go with the uh, vector-based one, Okay, the very first one. So again, it's the shape, layer, then you have paths, and then you just have pixels. And that's the basics of the custom shape tool and things to consider. Thank you.